On the news tonight, President Bola Tinubu swears in new ministers, calls for accountability, trust and transparency. Yosom Wike takes over as FCT minister, says all illegal structures will go down. And Oshun Assembly suspends ongoing staff audit amid controversies begins investigation. Hello and welcome to News Now on TV 316 Nigeria. I am Sinisola Adigun. All 45 confirmed ministers have been sworn in by President Bola Tinubu. The event, which was held at the presidential villa in Abuja, had in attendance top government officials, dignitaries and traditional rulers. The ministers who have been charged to restore who have been charged to restore peace in the state, to restore the people's faith in governance, now form a key part of President Bola Tinubu's administration. Our correspondent, Fala Shade Ogunri, tells us more in this report. After two months, three weeks, and two days, the administration of President Bola Hamed Tinubu has come full circle with the swearing in of 45 ministers, one after the other. The portfolio of all 45 ministers were read, with each taking an oath to serve with integrity and honor in service to the nation. Just before Monday's inauguration, President Tinubu shuffled portfolios earlier assigned to the appointees, relocated ministries as well as created new ones. Abubakar Mama was reassigned to the newly created Federal Ministry of Niger Delta Development from the Federal Ministry of Youths. Former Ocean State Governor Adigboyega Oyetola is to take charge in the Ministry of Marine and Blue Economy, while Bumi Tsunji Ojo will man the Ministry of Interior. Saido Akeli takes oath as the Minister of Transportation. Also, both Ministers of State in the oil and gas sector are now based in the Federal Ministry of Petroleum Resources. After all 45 ministers had been sworn in, President Tinubu warned that their service is to the Federal Republic of Nigeria and not for ethnic or regional gain. The challenges we face today are very daunting. Yes, they are. Yet, amidst these evident challenges, we have the opportunity to implement long overdue reform that will improve the operations of government, transform our nation's economy, and ensure peace, safety, and prosperity for our people. Tinubu while emphasizing that the ministers were selected based on their track record of excellence and achievement in public and private sectors, charged them to restore public faith in governance. Greatest number of Nigerians are highly expectant of delivery and accountability and transparency. <clears throat> Nigeria expects that you will serve with integrity, dignity, and deliver, and we hold you to that standard. We both, we all promise Nigerians. Nigeria should be expecting a departure from the norm. Everybody knows what's been happening in that solid mineral sector of the economy. It's been free tied away. Nigeria has been shortchanged. We've been receiving the shorter end of the stake. There is going to be a critical departure from that norm. Every ministry, the expectation of Nigeria or Nigerians is that you key into the um, hope agenda of Mr. President. Each ministry has a role to play. President Tinubu had initially sent out 48 names to the Senate for screening and approval. However, only 45 were confirmed, leaving the immediate past governor of Kaduna State, Nasser El Rufai, former deputy governor of Terebo State, Abubakar Danladi, as well as Stella Okotete. Fulashade Ogurinde, TV360 News. 
Newly inaugurated Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, FCT, Yes on Wike, has warned those distorting the master plan of the FCT to expect demolition of their properties soon. Wike made this known at a news conference in Abuja on Monday to announce the short, medium and long-term plans to overhaul the FCT and reposition it among the best cities in the world. He said his administration will demolish all illegal structures, regardless of how highly placed the owners are. The minister added that the government would no longer tolerate the indiscriminate operation of markets and motor parks by the roadside. All those people who are distorting the master plan of Abuja, too bad, too bad. If you know you are built where you are not supposed to build, it will go down. It will go down. Be a minister of anywhere, be an ambassador. If you know you have developed where you're not supposed to develop, your house must go what? Down. Those who have taken over the green areas to build, sorry, our parks must come back. The green areas must uh, come back. If you hate green, you must hate yourself. So if you know you have anybody who is involved, and I've taken over the green areas, I've taken over the parks, to where you now do restaurants. No, we will not accept that. Sorry. If your father has done that, sorry. <laughs> if your mother has done that, sorry. There's nothing I can do. It will go down. Now for more analysis, Evans Ofeli, who is a legal practitioner and political affairs analyst, joins me now. Thank you very much for joining me. Now, what's your assessment of the um, reshuffled portfolios? We have Abu Bakr Momo reassigned to the newly created Federal Ministry of Niger Delta Development from the Federal Ministry of Youth. What's your impression of, uh, of that development? Uh, cabinet, whether immediately or after appointments have been made, uh, the reshufflement sometimes come with certain reason for which the president ordinarily is not bound by law to make such elaborate uh, reason for such appointments or reshufflements. But um, one would have expected that since the president took the whole time allowed by law within which to constitute his cabinet, that uh, it would have been a watertight uh, process for which um, by now we should have the ministers already assigned to their duties and they're ready to go to work. But um, uh, after the last set of ministers were named, and we noticed that uh, the minister of Niger Delta uh, uh, was not, uh, Niger Delta Commission was not uh, there. So uh, the reshufflement uh, which has been done uh, best known to the government uh, is, is one that we, we have to project this administration. It is quite too very early to um, to begin to uh, judge the ministers. Uh, the president have made a series of mistakes, uh, uh, correcting them and making more mistakes. But uh, perhaps we'll see what uh, the ministers are going to do. We, we cannot say that it, it is a good reshuffment or is a bad one because the ministers are all new the government itself is a new one is a new administration um they, they will require time uh, time will uh, unveil whether or not nigerians made the right choice as regards uh, this administration um there are a lot of um, very technically bad moves that have been made we hope they, they will be corrected uh, as early as uh, they can. Um, the ministerial appointments, in like manner, uh, we cannot say the appointments were bad or good, even though some persons have criticized heavily that uh, if it were these persons uh, that the president intended to appoint, why did it take that long to put them together? Well, I know that um, uh, we are all going to wait and see how best this administration turns out uh, the respective uh, ministers who have just been sworn in, and um, the way the administration will go, how they will direct the administration, 
and how they will administer the dividend of democracy. So Nigerians are waiting. Mr. Feli, I'd like, I'm sorry I have to cut you short here. Let's talk about the new FCT minister, the new sheriff in town, in person of former River State Governor Yesom Wike, who has begun talking tough. Now, is it too early to start making threats? Well, yeah, we can have that uh, propensity. Uh, uh, he has that propensity to to talk tough. Uh, it has been his characteristic. So he's just exhibiting his his self, his his person. Um, what he's trying to say that if you have done uh, anything wrong structurally in the FCT, your your structure will go down. And he's saying it with such um, such uh, virulent finality, uh, as he had done in River State. Uh, it's one man that I've heard um, the, the, the doctrine of morality as regards governance, very high esteem. Even though there are a lot of people who criticize him to say that uh, he has done uh, a lot of corrupt things too. But uh, for me, saying that uh, I have assumed office and I'm going to ensure that the right things are done, I'm going to ensure that those who have uh, violated the structural master plan of the FCT will pay dearly for it. The consequences are with them. Uh, I mean, uh, if you know you have not done anything wrong in the FCT, you have nothing to fear. Uh, if and if he's going to do this based on law, based on the, the structure of the FCT, that that will be okay. What is not acceptable is when he uses this position to victimize uh, people. To that is what will not be acceptable. Thank you very much for your time and your contribution. Moving on, Governor Ademola Adeleke has ordered the Oshun Assembly to suspend the ongoing staff audit exercise indefinitely. This comes following several crises and accusations that followed the exercise. Several workers' unions had protested against alleged harassment and humiliation by the consultant handling the exercise in the, in the past few weeks, which led to altercations at the venue of the exercise. The staff of Oshun State University had on Friday protested against the exercise over alleged harassment, thereby disrupting the exercise and demanded an apology. Apology. Despite the police ban on all street protests in Kano State, Governor Abba Kabir has received protesting youths under the aegis of the Kano State Civil Society Forum as they called for justice at the Governorship Election Petitions Tribunal. According to them, a judge at the tribunal allegedly warned against people trying to bribe her. The Commissioner of Police in the state, Husseini Gumel, had disclosed the details of an intelligence report which revealed that both the New Nigeria People's Party, NNPP, and the All Progressives Congress, APC, are mobilizing for street protest against the tribunal seating. The Justice Development and Peace Center at the St. Agnes Catholic Church has held its annual symposium on how drug addiction survivors can re be reintegrated into the society. This year's event also focuses on the difficulties of rehabilitation and reintegration post illicit substance misuse. Our correspondent, Sidney Okafo, has more details in this report. Gathered here in this hall are stakeholders in Nigerian's health sector to sensitize youth of St. Agnes Catholic Church on the need to dissociate from substance abuse. Also in focus is the need to prevent stigmatization of both victims and survivors of drug abuse. Is that how you tell the person, as that when do you that, I don't think I'm stupid. Whatever happened in the previous part was a result of my, not my, my knowledge, that I don't have the knowledge of it, but now that I have knowledge of it, I mean, my right frame of mind, you can't tell me I don't know what I did then. So by kind of making use, the, the other person that is stigmatizing into under making him understand. And if, per eventual, that person stigmatized by calling him in different name, and he reacted to it, maybe taking any weapon and all, they, they will still kind of continue to stigmatize him. But when his reactions, his behavior, Prove beyond reasonable doubt that is in, in its own right frame of mind. Gradually, the stigma will what will reduce. The thing about JGBC is that they are, they are, they are a group of enlightened people. They understand the, the importance of reintegrating, um, avoiding judgments, avoiding stigmatization. You know, you you want to ensure that they, these people that have experienced substance use abuse in the past. 
are not stigmatized. A report by the United Nations Office on Drug and Crime in Nigeria indicate that 14.4% of people aged between 15 and 64 years abuse drugs and associated crime leading to a considerable number of youths being imprisoned in the country. Speaking on this development, Ibiba Odili, Commissioner on Narcotic National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, say some youths turn to drug addiction as a result of dysfunctional families or peer pressure. It is those things that are increasing because of the way the society is being driven. Because the world is a global village, what happens in Canada will be replicated in Ayobo. So these are the issues, some of them, that are propelling and promoting the drug abuse problem. For Chima Hillary, Chairman Anti-Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking Committee, the need for public sensitization to prevent stigmatization of victims has become more urgent than ever. As well as someone has mental issue, it's very difficult for the family to be integrating. They always say, ah, it was once, it was had this issue before, it was had this issue before. They always remind, that's too much, it's difficult to clear. So that, what, what we are here is to let people know that, no, we must accept them back to the society. We must accept them back to the families. That's where the real healing starts from. In 2019, the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLA, launching nationwide enforcement operation to stop the trafficking of illicit drugs into and out of Nigeria. Since the nationwide enforcement, the agency has seized over 56 billion kilograms worth of drugs and has made 85,000 arrests. Sydney Okafo, TV360 News, Lagos. We'll take a break here, but still to come, Nigerians decry surge in the price of cooking gas. We'll bring you details of the story when we return. In the last three years, we have built a multi-purpose center, which is the envy of all in our constituency. And I can tell you that the people who are living there are already enjoying it. Guy, do you think what this man just said is true? See, I seriously doubt. I'm sure it's one of those that are silly lies. And hey, wait, do you know there's a way to find out if these things he's saying is true or not? Ah. This is the construct app. It gives people like us a sure way to track implementation of constituency projects. It gives valid and verified information on location of projects, amounts allocated, amounts funded, the level of job done, and even the profiles of concerned legislators. You and I can post directly on this app. Are you serious? This is the go-to app if you want to know how our commonwealth is being expended by the government. Wow. Let's even see if what this man said is true. Show me. The Construct app is developed by Other People Nigeria with support from USAID and is available on both Google Play Store and Apple Store. Eh, and it's true. <laughs> of course, I told you. Opinions are free. Facts are sacred. The truth is universal. How in practical terms? Can we, for instance, de-escalate the tension? President must see himself as the president of the federal republic. We know where the enemy is. Three places. Um, the Lake Chad basin, the border area between Nigeria and Cameroon, and then the Sambisa forest. On DG 360, we give you a complete dose of everything. Opinion, facts, and undiluted truths. I hardly believe what politicians say in this uh, part of the world. A new Nigeria is possible, a future is possible. We delve into the issues, dissect it so that you can understand it, use it to take action. I don't think there's any need for go any governor to look for grant for ranching. DG360, dissecting the issues.
Welcome back. A quick recap of some of our top stories tonight. All 45 ministers have been sworn in by President Bola Tinubu. The event, which was held at the presidential villa in Abuja, had, attendance, had in attendance top government officials, dignitaries and traditional rulers. The ministers who have been charged to restore the people's faith in governance now form a key part of President Bola Tinubu's administration. We also told you that the newly inaugurated Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, FCT, Yeson Wike, has warned those distorting the master plan of the FCT to expect demolition of their property soon. He said his administration will demolish all illegal structures, regardless of high, how, how highly placed the owners are. Now, just in case you missed any of our news bulletins, or for more updates, you can catch us on Limex World TV or log on to our website on www.tv316nigeria.com. You can also follow us on our social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at TV316 Nigeria. On Facebook, we're at TV316 Online. Hello? Yeah, I found your wallet in front of a supermarket. Meet me at Apple Junction. Yes, I'll be waiting for you. Now we find out. <laughs> Two of us. <laughs> Thank you very much, officer. You know, it's surprising that men like you still exist in the police force. Yes, oh, yes. This is just a token <laughs> of my appreciation. Oh, no. You don't need to do this. We are only doing our job. <laughs> Thank you very much. God You're bless welcome. you. You're now I know police is really my friend. Yes. Friend. Hey. Okay, which came up with this one? Now? I don't understand. Wait, wait, wait. You know your problem. You are greedy. Uh, I'm a policeman who is doing his job. All forms of corruption in the force. Not in my country. Corruption not in my country. Welcome back. Mary Kano joins us now with Business News. Over to you, Mary. Many thanks, Simsala. Welcome to Business News. Nigerians have been battling many challenges, including insecurity and harsh economic conditions occasioned by high inflation rates since the removal of fuel subsidy. Another concern is the recent hike in the price of liquefied petroleum gas, LPG, also known as cooking gas, which has affected households as well as business owners in the sector. Our correspondent, Sidney Okafor, tells us more in this next report. Tougher times have hit gas consumers, retailers, as well as wholesalers as the price of liquefied petroleum gas, popularly known as cooking gas, has been on the rise. Between May and August 2023, the price of 12.5 kg of LPG rose to as high as 12,000 Naira, from the 9,500 Naira the National Bureau of Statistics quoted in its May 2023 LPG reports. This price surge is having crushing effect on Nigerians. Consumers say purchasing a 12.5 kg worth of cooking gas is becoming almost impossible. What you will tell me that the increment yes. is affecting us because it's not the way we use it that is what we use now. And everything is high in the in this country. We're only surviving by the grace of God. We want government to do something about this uh, increase in price every day on everything in Nigeria because we are not happy. As I was yet this morning to come and fill my uh, gas. The thing has already gone up now and we are not happy at all. Nigeria holds the largest natural gas reserve on the continent and ranks sixth globally among exporters of liquefied natural gas, LNG. In 2021, according to British Petroleum World Energy Review released in June 2022. But this number have not translated to cheap and available cooking gas. Like before, we used to say like only 50 kg, we say like two in a day, but now like one. Even the one say at time, we say two times in a, two days. So it's very affecting us like before. Like before, one kg is five something, four something, seven, but now one kg is 800. We don't increase where we are. They affect us where we are. This business, if they go before, I they sell 1 kg, 5, 500, 600, but now nah, it don't cost better than one I sell them before. So, maybe when I tell government, make we do something. 
This is not a fair to us if you come here before customer go full. You go to sell them, everybody will come out, but nah, nobody knows that again. The government should just look into it at least. They should have a way of reducing the cost from the depot so that we too we can reduce our own price. So that we won't run to loss. Experts say the hike in price is linked to depreciation of Naira, increased investment rate, forest scarcity, among other factors. Across the globe now, the cost of chartering vessels, more especially gas vessels, gas vessels, is high, is, has increased. So it's affecting the movement of this gas down to the consumers. So there is always a tendency when these things increase at the global market, there's also a strong tendency that the prices, of, the prices will scale down to the consumers. Former President Mohamed Buhari had declared January 1, 2021 to December 31, 2030 as Nigeria's decade of gas. The policy is expected to attract $14 billion in foreign direct investment, raise $12 billion in revenue through royalties and taxes, and create 2 million jobs by 2030. Sydney Okafor, TV360 News, Lagos. We'll take a break and be back with Stock Market Report. Stay with us. This week, we see investors buy interest strengthen as the Nigerian Exchange Limited All Share Index and market capitalization increased by 0.71% to 65,202 basis points and 35.684 trillion naira, respectively. John Holt led the League of Advances as well as 30 other gainers. And so we see the market breadth close positive against 15 losers. Now, the close of trading, 231 million shares were traded in 5,000. 1,494 deals. Now, the market's positive trade, according to investors, comes on the back of the federal government's recent intervention in the FX market. Now, over to the global scene, another poor trading for the FTSE and the Dow Jones as both equities slumped to 0.063% and 0.34%. Now, the move comes as uh, the Federal Reserve's interest rate campaign is again set to take center stage in an otherwise sleepy week in markets. And that's the stock market report. Simisala, back to you. Thank you very much, Mary, for the update. And on the global scene, nurse Les Lucy Letby, who was unmasked as the UK's most prolific child serial killer in modern times, has been given a whole life sentence. The 33-year-old was convicted of murdering seven babies and attempting to kill six other infants at the Contest of Chester Hospital. Let me deliberately injected babies with air, force fed others milk, and poisoned two of the infants with insulin. She will now spend the rest of her life behind bars, becoming the fourth woman in UK history to receive such a sentence. And in sports, Manchester United player Mason Greenwood will not return to play for the club after it concluded an internal investigation less than a week after a leaked plan to reintegrate him into the club sparked controversy. Greenwood hasn't played for the club since January 2022 when the police launched a probe into the footballer, arrested him and released him on bail. In October 2022, three charges against him were made public by the police, including attempted rape, assault and controlling as well as coercive behavior. And that's it in our bulletin this evening. Many thanks for watching. I'm Simisola Adigun.